Now for the fun part. We enter the new world of Act 2. Whenever I get a new story idea, and I'm in that honeymoon phase of the idea when my brain is just downloading piles of ideas for scenes, images, and events, most of the time, the majority of those first wave ideas happen in this part of the movie, the first half of Act 2. You know, Blake Snyder, Save the Cat, literally calls this the fun and game section. It's where the marketing department will pull about 70% of the footage you'll see in the trailer. And it's because this is the point where your hero is still new to this new world and experiencing it for the first time. They're still creatures of the old having to interact with the new. So all of these possibilities that came to mind when you first thought of your story, a lot of them will naturally fall here. This is also one of the simplest sections of the movie because goals and missions are clear. We're going to take these droids to the princess. We're going to shoot all the terrorists. We're going to get Maui and make him restore the heart of Defeaty. We're journeying to a solution. We've got a clear goal and a clear destination. So we're moving toward that, fighting the obstacles along the way. It doesn't get any simpler than that. The break into Act 2 also brings one of people's favorite parts of your movie, the B story, a supplemental character element or plotline that runs parallel to our hero's external journey and speaks into their internal journey. My favorite kind of B story characters are the ones like Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive, or even like Billy Bob Thornton in Eagle Eye. Those guys aren't the bad guys, but they are the pursuing antagonistic force up until the end of the second act, and at, at which point we'll get to, but they usually been brought into the inner circle of the information by that point, and they then help the hero make it to the end. Those are fun characters to watch and write. But often the B story is actually the romantic interest, or even the bad guy. Speaking of bad guys, bad guys don't get a lot of screen time in the first half of Act 2. Uh, we check in with them occasionally, and their presence is definitely, you know, felt, but they will rarely have any interaction with our heroes during this time. And very often that's because the hero can be their own worst enemy at this point. They just want the adventure to be over with and have things go back to normal, or they don't believe in themselves and their future potential yet. Right now, our hero is the biggest obstacle standing in the way of their own progress. So we've established how much I like to write stories within stories. It really helps me to keep larger story moving if I can commit to a series of tiny stories. And the first half of Act 2 is definitely no exception. You could treat this entire section as one short film, but I like to treat it as two. In my opinion, you get two great, two great sections out of the first half of Act 2. You get the first section, where you find Maui and convince him to board Moana's boat and restore the heart of Defiti. Then you get the second section, where you get to fight a bunch of coconut warriors and get Moana and Maui working together-ish. Together-ish is a good place to be by the end of Act 2. Not quite there, but working toward it. Look at it like one big arc for your character here, which is usually them adapting to this new world's rules and accepting their situation. Then play it out in these two major sections. And make sure you have fun in this section, because that's what's supposed to happen here, but also because things are about to get real.